welcome back to the channel we're actually talking about the car we're sat in which is my car and we wanted to bring to you a little ownership review so it's been nine whole months of the Velar pretty pretty happy with it I've got some questions because I know a few people that want to buy a Range Rover Velar and obviously the price has gone up a lot with the new Velar overview of the last nine months um, nothing's gone wrong plus I haven't actually done anything to the car it's just been running pretty smoothly let's do a, a walk around just so people can remember what the car looks like kept it looking clean okay. look at that as you can see uh, I haven't cleaned it in a while no knocks on the wheels they're doing well yeah yeah it's to be fair apart from the dirt it's it's pretty good the bodywork's always been decent hasn't it you can have a look at all angles this is the 180 d180 so it's a two litre diesel. Smallest engine you can get on a Velar. I did that for a reason, because I wanted maximum yeah, efficiency. Yeah, MPG. I mean, they say 49, don't they? That like something ridiculous, 49 yeah. point we'll, something. We'll talk about that later. This is how it's been. I still think it looks pretty good. What do you think? I want to talk about the grill, because when they updated the range Velar, they, I think they start from like something ridiculous, like 70 grand now, but they used to start from 46K on the website. Then the new ones come in and it's it's jumped to like 70 odd. It's jumped up. So yeah. this so this car when I got it was 38k. Good, good mate. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, I don't know, I haven't looked at prices recently, but I don't think it's gone down that much. No. And the and much they've changed is the grill the grill to, I actually am not sure about the new grill. It's kind of no. different with I don't yeah. know, they've just changed the grill and they changed the headlights. And I the feel bumpers. like the looks of this car, it's gonna age well. Yeah. I'm happy with the car. It still impresses me when I walk away from it. I still like the looks of it. Down here, I love that. The R Dynamic bumper is awesome, isn't it? With the, especially with the copper uh, elements incorporated here. Because the normal SE Velar, just it, the bumper just looks a little bit bland and plain. So the R, I definitely love the front bumper look. The R Dynamic looks good. But yeah, I'm happy with it. There's another little circle around it. I still think it looks pretty pretty sweet it's got lots of flies on it yeah what should we do jump in go for a ride should we jump in first question then has to be as we all know of land rover range rover reliability what has the reliability reliability been like in nine months nine months it's all gone wrong it's been in the shop ten times ten times no, I'm, joking. I'm joking okay i'm joking no not one not one chance has it gone wrong? So no mechanical failures or anything like that? No. Gearbox? No, it's all been it's all been good in the nine months. Fingers crossed it stays that way. But I do have a good uh, warranty with it, so hopefully I don't have to use it. But, um, but okay. no, so far it hasn't it hasn't done anything wrong. And just so people can know, how much month per month would is the warranty you got? How much uh, money does it cost you? I can't actually remember. I think it was like Fifty pounds a month. Fifty pounds a month. Okay, and it's like over four years or whatever, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting because a lot of Land Rover content we shoot, and actually the one we did about what to look for with the Range Rover Sport, we get a ton of comments, which is great because it's a great resource of people's experience with their Range Rovers, and a lot of people are saying they haven't had any problems. Yeah, some people do say they have problems. That's fair. Yeah. And people I, say that. I mean, when I was looking, when I was looking for the car, I sort of joined a lot of Facebook groups that yeah. like owner owner groups that sort of thing and people love to post when something goes wrong yeah so you see a lot of posts about oh this has gone wrong I'm never gonna buy a Land Rover again this has gone wrong but people don't generally post if it doesn't go wrong so no like, I know it's annoying most that. Of the people in the group actually don't have anything wrong with their cars yeah and I know all manufacturers have cars that do go wrong but any you, car can you, go you wrong. You literally never know what's going to happen. You never know what sort of car you're going to get no. until you've had it for a long time and you can sort of trust it. And at the minute, I don't probably, I'll probably say I don't trust it completely just because of the history. Yeah. Uh, but it is getting there. Do you remember anything that you remember to look out for when you were looking at buying a Velar? Did anyone talk about you really got to watch out for the engine or you got to watch out for the crank? You know, no, I, the only thing that they sort of said is the uh, Discovery. Don't go for the smallest engine one because apparently that always goes wrong. Right, Discovery uh, Sport, yeah. The I think that was the normal Discovery. Oh, okay. Um, Velars, they generally said that there wasn't any particular issue to watch out for yeah so it's just a bit of a gamble really and i believe if, it shares its platform doesn't it with an f-pace 
yes, yes, they're the very similar cars. Yeah. Um, so, but what I would say is you always got to check the history of any car that you buy. Yeah, yeah. So for this, I like literally run up Land Rover and said, tell me any time it's been in the shop for anything. And they said it literally got in for one service because it was still quite new. Right. So, and then after that, it hasn't it hasn't been touched by anyone. So. So when did it? Uh, what, what, let's talk about mileage then. You've had it nine months. Um, was it one owner before you? One owner before me. Yeah. So, What's the miles? So I think when I got it, it was around thirty-five thousand miles. Now it's on forty-one. So, yeah, like six thousand miles or so. Yeah. Not done loads. And uh, yeah, I can say I've enjoyed the miles. What type of trips have you done? Any off-roading in it? Have you? So I do live quite rurally, so we go around the fields and on grass and tow some trailers and stuff, but nothing too hard work. I haven't taken it down any byways or yeah. gone proper off-roading in it because you generally don't. Um, but it's handled everything else pretty easily. Um, I wouldn't say it's you know messed up on anything in particular. No, it's good. I like to say you tow as well because you can still use this car to tow. You can't tow maximum, but then again, think about what you're towing. You don't always need to carry yeah. it like tow 3,500, do you? No, and the, unless you've got like horses or something, you yeah. don't really need that. But I mean, even with the two litre diesel, I wouldn't be towing loads of weight because you just know it's going to struggle. Yeah. And uh, but you got a lot, I get you still got the option there, haven't you? Yes, yeah. so you want to talk about the MPG of the okay. car because I sort of bought this car thinking that it was going to get sort of 40 to 50 mpg yeah um it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't get that really. i'm seeing 37 up there so i'm sort of averaging probably between 35 and 37 mpg for a two liter diesel i know it's a big car it's not too bad i'm yeah. not i'm not too disappointed in it um but it's a little bit lower than i was expecting but it is what it is and that's you not like gunning it at all that's just literally no, just normal driving that's not it's not gunning it this is uh so at the minute it says 37 mpg and the 153 miles so i reset it after every time i refuel right just so i sort of know what i'm getting to and the tank i guess yeah yeah the 150 miles that i have done have mostly been sort of you know b roads or motorways so yeah it's not been it's not just done short journeys it's not just done yeah like, motorway driving um, it's done a little bit of both so okay what's the best thing that you've enjoyed about owning a Velar? Um I think the best thing about owning it is just that it's a nice comfortable ride that can just do everything yeah so you know you enjoy your time in it and you do look forward to driving it so we've got two cars and you're always going to be like oh I'm going to go in the range because yeah. you want to enjoy the experience of it and like all the infotainment, all the buttons, all the heating and stuff, it's all really easy. It Big works, and clear. Yeah, it works really well. The seating position's nice. You feel like fairly high up. Yeah, you do. That's one thing you always feel like you kind of sat lower because the bonnet greets you high and then there's only so much yeah. like, a ton of visibility. Space in the back's good. So you've got plenty of room in the back, plenty of room in the boot. Um, unless you've got a really big family, you're not going to struggle. Mm. So I think just the practicality and the ride in it just makes it a good all-round car, really. All right, what's the worst thing that you found in um, the car? I don't know. I'm not sure of the worst thing. People always love that on YouTube, don't they? They're always like, "This is what I hate about the car," and then they're like, and then they say, "Oh, it's the scratchy bit of plastic here yeah. on the vent," and you're like, "Oh, well, come this on!" This is the worst thing about the car. It's too pricey. You're like, well, everyone knew the price before you bought it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought they were pretty fairly priced before the new updated model came out on the yeah. website. When we did that video, um, when you first got this, you could buy one from from 46k. If you could go back and choose differently, would you go for anything else? Would you go, mm, you know what, I might get the I might get the F-Pace or I might go up to the Sport, mm, or are you just kind of happy? I'm kind of happy. I think the only thing that I was, because I was always a BMW guy before, so I came yeah. from uh, an M2, and if you haven't seen the videos of 
the Velar or all the M2 before, then go and check them out on the channel. We've got we've enough got, videos. We've got quite a few <laughs> we've got videos quite a lot. There. So have a little look. Um, but I was only really looking at the X5 because I wanted the newer sort of look of the X5. Yeah. Which I really liked. So I do like the X5. Yeah. And they look what they're quite squatty, aren't they? Yeah. My quite, dad's got that X5. Quite and it's wide. Oof. But so, again. How much is that? When you when you think, and that's what's crazy yeah, sometimes. They were too much money, to be fair. I think this is the better buy for the money. Yeah. Um, because I feel like even the interior of this looks better than the X5. Yeah. yeah. So I was happy, but that would be the only probably alternative that I'd seriously consider. I think it's if you asked a range of people and said, "What's more premium, Range Rover or BMW?" I bet you more people would say Range Rover. Yeah, I think Range Rover have that sort of, I don't know, reputation of being a bit posh. Yeah, or posh a bit, SUV. Yeah, a bit more upmarket, even though it's cheaper than a BMW. Yeah. But it, as I don't think it's going to age that much. Like, even if I kept this for like four years. No. I don't think it's going to age that much. No, it still looks can, futuristic. Yeah, some cars you can just already tell. You're like, oh, this is going to look terrible in four years. Mm. But with this, I'm like, actually, it's all right. No, I agree with you because you can see they took a lot of design cues from the Velar with their new uh, Range Rover, Range Rover Sport in kind of the reductionism, like smoothed off. Even the new Sport's kind of copied uh, the tail lights of this car. So all of that, design language from Range Rover helps this live a little bit longer you know and Definitely. it's uh it, it's still always going to be a nice modern looking car on the road and Velar owners always you know absolutely love the car and we've done a video actually that compares this to the Range Rover Sport and why this is the better buy than a Sport so we'll put that in a little uh, click banner you can so if you have any other questions on the Velar or how it's running or any other questions that you're maybe you're thinking of buying one and you want a bit more advice just pop them in the comments down below and we'll try our best to answer them um but yeah no complaints sign off sign off yeah thanks Cheers. for watching get subbed throw us a like get subbed comment down below anything you like and we'll see you on the next one